I am in San Francisco tonight, and it is the center of the technology world right now. That is because Dreamforce, a tech mega conference, kicked off here today. It is run by Salesforce, one of the most valuable companies in the world. It was founded less than 25 years ago, and today it is worth more than 215 billion bucks. Earlier this afternoon, I sat down with Mark Benioff, the co-founder, chairman, and CEO of the company, to, go, to talk about everything from artificial intelligence to the woes facing this town. Mark, oh. I am in San Francisco for Dreamforce. You have 40,000 people in this city, right? Dreamforce is like the Super Bowl hitting San Fran, a huge event every year. Yet you said this year, because of the state of the city, this might be the last year you host here. Well, you're right. We have $80 million of a GDP increase in the next three days for San Francisco, and this is the most exciting but also most important conference that happens here in San Francisco. It's 40,000 people. Those are just the attendees coming into the city, plus all the vendors and all the other activity that happens. It's our annual Lollapalooza here, and but we're excited losing, to be happy here. But you're, in many instances, you know, San Francisco's favorite son. Are you losing faith in this town? Well, I, I'm a fourth generation San Franciscan. I love it here. I, you can see gorgeous day. Everything is very clean and spick and span right now. It's today. Today. But then and why I you... have said to the city that it's very important for the next three days need to go really well. And uh, so far, we're getting a good result from them, and we want it to. Uh, Continue. So we're very grateful to the city. We want their attention on keeping it as as uh, clean and safe as possible. This is the most important thing any city government can do. But three days is a blink in time. Tell me about your worries for this town. People across the country who aren't in San Francisco are hearing horror stories about this town. Well, I understand that. I have friends of mine who call me all the time who are lamenting San Francisco. The the number one issue in San Francisco is we have a homeless problem. We've had it here for 50 years. We continue to not address it. It's definitely gotten amplified with uh, fentanyl, and the city needs to directly address this issue. It's not our only issue in San Francisco, but it's our main issue. It's primarily isolated to our downtown or civic center area. It needs to be addressed. We have, we have other issues, too. How? What, do you, what is the prescription to solve San Francisco? I mean, as I said, many people think of you as sort of the business mayor of this town, and the brand of San Fran has been damaged seriously in the last few years. Well, I think one of the most important things is we must enforce our laws here in San Francisco. That's something that tends to be a debate. Why is that, <laughs> that a debate? Should we, be, right, why is that a should debate? we be enforcing the laws the or not? Is yes. <laughs> the second thing is we must be focused on funding and investing in our police force. We're down to about 1,400 cops here from about 2,000 before the pandemic. And that's another key part of San Francisco is we've got to focus on our police force. This is also critical for the future uh, of our city. Out of 63 cities surveyed in the U.S., San Francisco ranks at the bottom in terms of getting back to pre-pandemic activity. What's going on here? Well, I think that a lot of things that are kind of teeing up to a major economic resurgence in the city really summarized in two letters, AI. <laughs> and this is the number one AI city in the world, which is amazing. We just subleased a huge amount of our real estate that we had available in the city, uh, almost uh, 300,000 square feet to one company that didn't exist a year ago. Um, there's an incredible economic resurgence that's happened in the last 12 months around AI, and every great AI company is here in San Francisco, and I think you're about to see another gold rush happen here. But you subleased it because you didn't need that office space. Well, I think you know that post-pandemic, and we've had many long, uh, aggressive conversations about this, is that companies have rebalanced their real estate. And we just don't need as much real estate anymore because our employees learned how, during the pandemic, to work at home. And now we work at home, and we're also in person, and we can do both. Be very successful, innovate, be with our customers, make it all work, have great revenues, high margins, great cash flow, do it all, and here's the result. Look at this conference. What is your current view on work from home? Because sort of at the height of the pandemic, you were thrilled to see this transformation and said, we can now work remotely. We've changed work. You sort of changed your view on that about a year ago, and there's a lot of CEOs out there. Amazon CEO, one of the most recent, who said, time to get back to work or you may be facing pink slips. What's your take? 
Well, I'm a remote worker. I've always been a remote worker my whole life. I don't work well in an office. It just doesn't work with my personality. I can't tell you why. I do love going to visit customers, though. So I'm on the road constantly visiting customers and their home? offices. Oh. I'm also going and having dinner with people. You've seen me probably at dozens and dozens of customer dinners. But you're a CEO. I'm talking about your workforce. Well, and for my people, that's my message, which is they need to mix in-person and remote together. And in-person means being together, which is great to be together, and also get productivity at home. Our engineers are extremely productive at home. We have lots of people who are extremely productive at home, but there also has to be salespeople who are productive in the office selling to customers and we need to make it all work. Let me ask you about AI because this conference is all about AI. You are super excited about it, but there is a portion of our society that looks at AI like the boogeyman, like it is just another arm of big business taking from the everyday worker, taking from society. What do you want people to understand? Well, people have seen movies, you know, they saw Space Odyssey, and they saw her, and they saw War Games, and they saw Minority Report, and they saw the Terminator. And they're and so scared. they understand AI means that you have a digital consciousness that is kind of out there operating within a computer and maybe within robots, and that can kind of act on its own potentially. And that's the world that we're rapidly moving towards. And so should we be thinking about how do we manage that? What are the values? Is the government involved? What is the future of artificial intelligence? This is, shouldn't be a shock to anybody, right? Everyone has seen, like I said, the movies that horror made it very movies. clear. Horror movies. Not all of them. Some of them are nice. Hair's not a, hers not a horror movie. I love her. Okay, but you have been highly critical of social media companies in the past and all the damage they did. You don't seem to be afraid of AI, shouldn't we? That is a great example, and I hope that's a wake-up call to our government because I think what we've said, and we've had numerous conversations about social media companies who took advantage of the lack of regulations or specific regulations that gave them unusual levels of freedom that should have been abolished years ago, and the government didn't act fast enough. In AI, I'm very heartened by the government is seeming to become more involved earlier in the cycle than they were with, with uh, social media. So we should be encouraging the government to work towards regulations that are gonna make AI safe and trusted and ethical and have the values um, that uh, we want it to have. And, and that you feel confident be... that that's gonna happen? Well, I don't know if I feel confident, but I know that we need to do the best that we can, and this is what we must do. It's not a question mark. It's not an if we should do this. We must do this. This is happening faster than we expected it to happen, and we all need to take this extremely seriously. Look, you've used ChatGPT at home or Bard, or one of these things, right? And where are you like, oh my gosh, how did it know this? And what about that? And what about this? This is baby steps. That's like your toddler was just born. Wait until you see what's coming in another five or 10 years. I know you've had kids grow up. Well, use that same analogy with AI. Like that's your toddler, ChatGPT and Bard. Think about what's gonna be happening, you know, when it's in high school. Mark Benioff, you have made me sufficiently excited and scared all at the same time. Always good to see you. Great to be with you. Thank you.